Hello, everybody. I'm Jabby Koei, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? Joined by Manoj Bajpayee. Hi. And we are here at Novotel, Mumbai International Airport. Thank you so much for allowing us to use your space while we conduct this interview with this wonderful, talented actor. I have a bone to pick with you, by the way. What is that? Because we were hanging out, yeah. and, and I told you I was halfway through your movie, and you didn't warn me what was up ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we were just watching it before you got here, and I cried so much. I will... I was holding back. She really okay, cried. I really cried so okay. much so that like all my makeup is messed up and like <laughs> I didn't have time to really redo any of it. So that's your fault because <laughs> like we we were just watching the movie and I had I had a Gumohar, feeling. Gumohar, by the way. Oh, yes, yeah, Gumohar for, for the audience who don't know. But um, I had a feeling from watching the trailer. I was like, I think this movie is gonna get me because whenever it's like family drama, anything if it has to do with family, I'm already halfway there when it comes to like the waterworks, but specifically your storyline. Right. I was devastated for Arun. <laughs> I was just like, how, yeah. that, what an awful like discovery to, to find out like right. all this stuff about his dad. Here's my question to you about that, because there are so many moments in the movie where you, you don't do much, but there's a lot going on with your eyes. Like, okay, there, for instance, there's a moment, I'm not gonna give anything away because I want you guys to watch the movie, it's really good. There's a moment where you're getting into an elevator and the guy goes, oh, you check in, you, ch you, you cancel, then you check in exactly. again, and then you go, mm -hmm, and then you go in the elevator, and it goes by fast, but I'm like, oh my God, like I feel everything he's feeling in that moment. Yeah. What is your thought process in creating those moments? Are you just in the mode as the character? You know, there's a film, a very beautiful film called Marriage Story. Uh, if you see the film, mm -hmm. you actually see his face going red mm -hmm. with uh, fear, with, uh, with anger, and with a sense of betrayal from his wife. And there is outburst by him. Mm -hmm. But before that, whatever uh, the, his wife is saying is, is actually hitting him. Acting is not about pretending. When they say that it's about pretending, it's, it is not about that. It's about really feeling it to your bone. <laughs> so when you're really feeling it <clears throat> and you really know where you are coming, where the character is coming from and where he's going to go and that truth is in between. We all learn craft. We, I have done. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all of the actors who have come from theatre, they work on the craft. They work on the craft not because they don't want to feel it. They work on the craft so that whatever they are feeling is communicated well. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. okay? absolutely. Yeah. The, so it's, it is channelized by the craft and the skill. I personally am into the character in most of the films that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Not the mainstream films, I must say, the commercial films that we make, because they don't allow us that space yeah. where yeah. you know you can afford to get into the. They don't want it. They want you to make an impact. Okay. They want you to uh, to be aware of the camera. They want you to be to be aware of the dialogues that you're going to say. You want to be aware, you have to be aware what kind of a, um, effect it is going to have on the audience. That's how mainstream films and the commercial films are done. But the, the film which is relying a lot on the characters and the story, the actors have to be extremely prepared. Yeah. Extremely prepared, extremely with the role, with the character, uh, so much so that the wall between the actor and the character should, you know, just go away. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was wondering as well, because when I watched uh, Gulmohar, I was like, wow, this really feels like it could just be a play. Right. And so I was wondering as well, like how, how much of your theater training kind of supported you in that or, or, or like with the other actors too? Yeah, I mean, what theater teaches you? primarily is to collaborate well mm. okay because theater is is a is a, is a medium where <clears throat> actors are not given a second chance you have to work together you can't be away in the vanity vanity van alone you prepare you are in the character but at the same time you should know how to hold the hand of your co-actor yes. mm. and take him uh, with you yeah. yeah okay if it needs be you have to really tell him or let him be free to tell you how to do it. Yeah. yeah. How we can really create a, create create this sequence as an uh, as an extraordinary uh, situation or extraordinary scene. So <clears throat> I like to really work with my actors, yeah. and 
and definitely the director when he is there looking at you from a distance you have to you have to just look at him for the affirmation all the time yeah. because cinema all said you know it is a director's medium yeah. if why is a director's medium because before i came into the project the script writers were there who had right. been working on it yeah. the production designers were working on it <laughs> the location break is happened cinematographer has been working on it then you come into it then you start rehearsing and you know everything which is needed to be done you you do that but when you are going on the set there are so many people putting in were putting their best foot forward just to make things completely ready so that you can come and perform and once when your job is done then comes the editor yeah <laughs> yeah 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 you got a whole bunch of other people yeah. and the vfx and all of that yeah. so it's all that whole thing is guided by one guy and that is rex sure there's one question on everybody's mind that i want to get to before we get too far along are we going to see another episode of special 27 now <laughs> <laughs> i wish really we could really make it because the director is is one of one not only one of my best friend oh is he but also also someone who i really admire mm-hmm. the craftsman that he is the storyteller that he is um and in the manner he uh, you know approaches his filmmaking yeah. and in the manner he writes his his script is quite superlative yeah. you know so i i really learn a lot just just when we are sitting together we right. talk yeah right well, i was actually going to ask you about if we're allowed to talk of it about it is a family man everyone wants to know is there another family man and you get asked it all the time is there another family man coming yes we are working on it okay. yes that's uh, that's positive uh, since uh, rajan dk they are quite busy with citadel second season okay. they are shooting uh, just when we are talking uh, they are quite busy with uh, that series but on the side the uh, the writers are working on season 3 of family man okay and i'm told that it's really turning out to be quite quite a you know quite a script mm-hmm. i would say and the and the character's journey is going to be you know, very very different from what you have seen till now are you allowed to drop any hints at all actually i'm not so everything that i'm saying is something that is conveyed to me okay <laughs> okay <laughs> how often are you calling them like yo where's the script i want to see something yes whenever <laughs> I, whenever you know rajan dk are calling me in between the breaks mm-hmm. of the shoot uh, we we are only talking about how we are going to go about, about the whole thing mm-hmm. this time uh, the preparation of the actors are going to be uh, humongous because uh, this time we are very very aware of one one thing mm-hmm. that we have to get into it with the mindset that we don't know anything and we have to visit it as if we are visiting it for the first time so you have a film that has a poster that's out is banda yeah. just a poster yeah, banda, nothing else yeah. why so much mystery what we want to see a trailer we can't we can't yeah, find like, a trailer yeah what's it about okay 23rd is that is day after tomorrow 23rd april is my birthday welcome to your 30s yeah <laughs> <laughs> 20s i was thinking <laughs> jabby so uh, that is when there will be there will be an announcement poster okay uh, which will be coming out and after that this uh, is a month long promotional uh, uh, drive that uh, the studio has planned so it's going to be quite quite an exciting uh, you know one month for me starting from new york uh, new york indian film festival this is where we are going to premiere it for the first time and after that and then we'll do some press in new york and once i come back from new york and you know just one shit city to another another city to you know one more city it's around 10 cities we have planned to travel and promote the film okay that's amazing also you had another film that had an international premiere that was Joram at the Rotterdam right. film festival right so like you're doing all these films which are seemingly having some sort of like crossover appeal for the for the western audience are we going to see more manoj bajpayee in like hollywood films maybe i you know you don't know i have my agent and my manager they've been they've been at it uh, i just hope that something works out not for any other reason just for one thing that you know three decades in this industry i i want to uh, you know challenge myself more do something very different i want to work in a, in a different circumstances different terrain different country with different people so if uh, i get something finger crossed 
uh, something really good, then I'll definitely travel to yeah. your side of <laughs> the <Yes>. world. <laughs> something worthy of your talents. I mean, just hope that, you know, they come out with uh, something really exciting for me where I just dive deep into it. Are you allowed to say anything about Banda before we get too far away I from mean, that? it's a courtroom drama. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a courtroom drama uh, which will be uh, coming after a long time okay. from, from this industry. Uh, it is going to be as authentic as it gets, oh. okay? As, uh, as dramatic, as exciting. It's actually inspired by many other, you know, true stories and incidents and the writers and the director they have created this such a fascinating story. I loved uh, playing this character. Also, it, when it is court dra courtroom drama, it's more dialogues, dialogues. Because you really can't run away from it. Because right. It's all about, you know, arguments and, uh, you know, and the response from the other side. So there are many, many uh, lines for me uh, in this book. Uh, and the climax itself was of six page where I non-stop I had to uh, speak. So, how do you memorize all yeah. of that? More than 150 times I must have rehearsed with the director uh, in my own space. I'm that mild guy who has to perfect it, uh, perfect the the dialogue so much so that I can I can improvise. You know, I can I can do something which suddenly comes to me. You know, at that point of time. So I should know my dialogue very well. So more than 150 times when just before we started shooting it for three cameras and I had to do it more than six times, seven times because they were changing the camera position all the time mm. just to cover uh, so that, you know, they had in enough coverage. Wait, you did that in six or seven takes? Yes, I have done. That's still amazing though, because like, I thought you were going to say like, I, pra I rehearsed like 150 times, then I had to shoot it 150 times, but like six, seven takes to get the coverage. I think that's like, you nailed, you must have nailed the performance. Yeah, from the first take itself, uh, yeah. first take itself was okay with uh, the camera positions. Then the director got uh, greedy and then he started changing the position of the cameras. He started doing more and more coverage, which was good for me and good for the film. But yes, uh, it was exhausting. Uh, I remember uh, I, was, I was sitting in my hotel room and I was talking to my wife. It was 10 o'clock in the night. And by that time, I must have rehearsed, you know, 20 times uh, in my own hotel room. She called up and I was talking to her. And I started doing the rehearsal again on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and she was, thanks to her, she very patiently, she was talking, she was just listening, mm -hmm. you know, till I really finished my, my monologue. Right. And then I said, how is it? Is it sounding good, authentic? Uh, what is your re reaction? She said, you are a mad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of asking me, how is it at home? <laughs> you are rehearsing while I'm talking to you on the phone. <laughs> Do you have a, a, a trick or a secret for committing lines to memory? Like just for your own purposes of memorization? Because that's a lot of, of dialogue in that, in that yeah. script. Like how did you get all that? So the first and foremost, don't get down to memorize it in the beginning. You just have to go through it again and again, again and again, at, at least 10 to 15 times. Just read that scene as much as possible, as many times as possible. Out, out loud or just in your head? I mean, initially just in your head, then you start reading it aloud. And you'll realize that each and every thing that you're saying, so one line is connected to the other line. Right. So that connection you start getting when you read it quietly or, or aloud, mm -hmm. uh, you, after, after six, seven times, you start getting the connection. Yeah. When you get the connection, that is when lines flow very naturally. Mm. So if you really get into uh, memorizing, memorizing it, that is the time you forget your dialogues. Okay. Yeah, because you don't, you don't you really know don't, the action, like yeah, the intention. You, yeah, in, yeah, you don't know the purpose of it. You don't know the, the reasons for the, the, the second dialogue or second paragraph. So you have to read it as many times as possible just to find the connection of one line to the other line. It's, it's, it's very, very important. I'll remember that then <laughs> next time I have to learn some dialogue. I have a quote from you that said, Joram was your career's most unique script. It's very, very unique script. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to speak to uh, Anurag Kashyap why he said that is my best performance. Oh. But even uh, when he saw it for the first time, I mean, my director, all the directors, mostly like-minded people, they show their first cut. 
to each other just to take their opinion so that they can they can change it on the edit and if it is not required then they will not but eventually they respect each other so much that they they show their films to each other so that's how uh, Anurag Kashyap responded to the film and then we traveled to Rotterdam Rotterdam is one of the most prestigious in the world and it's not Indian diaspora it's it's uh, these are the filmmakers came from all over the world or, and the actors all the local Rotterdam people or Netherlands or the um, Amsterdam people they booked the tickets so the first day when we opened the film only 60% filled up uh, occupancy but the second third fourth fifth shows it was so packed up that people were sitting on the on the stairs wow so wow. the first first screenings world has has really traveled very fast to everyone to the to the audience so i'm very very excited to show that film to 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 our audience to everyone does that still surprise you though i mean it's you so does, <laughs> does it still surprise you it's like come on they're gonna see you and they're gonna be like oh my god it's so magical it's so it's the best performance i've ever seen like every time you do a movie that doesn't do well it's like well the movie's not good but manoj bajpayee is you know it's you're always shining no matter what i've been very lucky that way mm. that i got some marvelous script on the directors yeah in my career yeah my credit all i would say that i have put in uh, uh 200 300 percent into yeah. it. I forget everything I when there is a script I tend to uh, ignore everything in my life so much so even the my accountant my chartered accountant uh, all of these guys they are very scared to visit me on the set because I tend to ignore them oh really <laughs> yeah till the time uh, it is it is rap I don't meet mostly I don't talk to anyone don't meet many people on the set Shooting in Mumbai is very challenging. It's quite chaotic, and also when people come to know that you are you are in the city, that they tend to come drop in on the set, mm. and that is quite a uh, quite a disturbance for me because that time <laughs> I'm just not there. Yeah, you know, to say hi, hello, and entertain people is very difficult for me. You're not a jerk. You're just in character. Yeah. <laughs> you're just focused. Like, don't talk to me. Okay. I'm in character right now. A, a question popped up into my head. Oftentimes, when someone has the opportunity to talk to an actor like yourself, they go. They always ask the same thing, which is, "What's your advice for someone young?" So I have a different question. What's your advice for someone who is older? And is like, you know, I wanted to do acting, but I focused on my family, or I focused on becoming an engineer, but I still want to do acting. Do you have any advice for that person? Oh, it's uh, for them. It's easy. Yeah. Because they have done what they have, what they what they had to do. They have fulfilled all their responsibilities. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So they want that freedom of doing something that they they thought they could do, but could not could not do it. So it's best for them. At this point of time, children must be quite grown up, so that responsibility is not there. A husband, wife, love and romance is almost, uh, you have come to terms with, the, you know, living life together. The, the 20s romance is not there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so both of, both, both of you are comfortable with each other, comfortable with each other's being there, not being there, uh, being there and quiet in each other's presence. You are comfortable with all of that. You are not in a relationship now anymore to impress each other. So this is the best time to do it. This is the best time to free yourself of everything and just throw yourself into it. Speaking of children and, and relationships, you've been with your wife for over a decade, right? Yeah. And your child, your daughter is 12 years old. 12 years old. So uh, we, we were talking the other day and you had uh, went on for a while about spirituality. How does spiritual, not spirituality, excuse me, meditation. Mm -hmm. And how does meditation affect your relationship with your wife? And how would you feel if your daughter wanted to pursue acting as well? With our daughter, at this point of time, we are only observing her as to which, uh, what are the things which you know that interest her but we are quietly observing her without telling her what to do and not to do i uh, we both want her to take or uh, make choices which is right for her and even if we see certain things very obvious we don't talk about it we just want her to flow without any hindrance and without any what do you call uh, that parental guidance that kind of a guidance helicopter parent helicopter parent yeah. so that is something we don't want to do it we are very happy with her growth 
uh, we were we were a little concerned when she was not doing well in her studies but now uh, after 11 that i can say that uh, uh, she's been surprising quite a lot she's not been that great in studies but she's you know far more great in other things uh, which are evolving very very fast and she's enjoying that well, that's amazing that you're so supportive of her like yeah. either way yeah let them fly and let them fall uh, just go and caress them uh, make them feel good when they fall and just when they are flying you just watch and appreciate because in my life uh, even my parents look I'm coming from village they were not exposed to modern modern society or this civilization where, which I'm part of uh, since many years but still they never stopped me it was the society around us which kept on making their judgment so these are the kind of children who grow very confident of themselves uh, these are the children who take immense amount of risk when they are choosing the path and the people who take risk are the, are the, are the children much more creative in their mind much much more and you've been with your wife for how long married uh, is uh, 2003 or 4 Oh wow! Okay, so oh. I come from I come from the divorce capital of the world, okay. <laughs> America. So, <laughs> I know that uh, uh, meditation uh, means a lot to you, and, and and you and your wife both do that. Uh, so, d how does that affect your relationship? Is there any secret to a a long loving relationship like the one that you have? There is no secret. Believe me, every day is a new day, and every day uh, you are you are trying to correct yourself. You know, you are every every time you are trying to improve yourself when it comes to staying in the marriage or understanding the other person. Uh, in, in the other interview, I said, I think, which was just correct, that uh, love alone cannot sustain your marriage. Okay, here you have to fo not focus on yourself, uh, focus on the other, other uh, on the other person who is in the marriage with you and look at things from her perspective in my case and shed all everything about yourself shed off everything your ego your insecurity so if all of these things you are you are ready to shed off there's a there are better chances that uh, you know uh, quarrels will be very less fights will be minimum uh, because we start putting ourselves first in any relationship this is where things start going wrong. And if if you think that the other person should not ignore certain things, I think in some of the karma uh, time, you should talk. And talking actually helps. I think that's actually really good advice. I think that's very helpful. Yeah. Uh, and you taught me something the other day. For those of you who don't meditate, Manoj taught me something that I, I, I have yet to put into practice, but I'm going to. <laughs> and so you had told me, you know, start out with like a couple minutes setting an alarm right and if you feel an itch it's okay it'll go away and that was actually a really key thing for me when you said that because it meant a lot to me because i'm very like anxious and i think about everything and you said you of course you're going to think about things that's normal let it come and then let it go a meditation of what i have seen on even on youtube mm -hmm. and in so many books they have really complicated it you know it's a it's it's about sitting in one place without moving and closing your eyes thoughts will come Thoughts will come because thoughts are part of your life. You have lived all of those things. You lived that thought. Right. And so they are not going to leave you so so easily. So if I wanted to act, I had to start from A to come to W, okay, or V, Y. But it has happened because of practice. Practice, practice practicing it over the years. Similarly, Meditation is also about practicing it. Some days are very bad. Right. Some days are blissful. But the end result is uh, is life changing. Yeah. yeah. It actually makes you work better. Mm -hmm. It actually makes you a better husband. Mm. Yeah. Makes you uh, a better father. Mm. Uh, better son, yeah. better friend. Uh, earlier, there is, used to be a lot of anxiety uh, before uh, in, be, before I started doing the shoot. But that anxiety is no more there. I'm looking at it from a distance and I'm trying to approach it wisely mm -hmm. and using my energy um, very well uh, when I'm, I'm really rehearsing or preparing for a role. So 
I think it has done more good than anything else. So yeah, you're very just interesting to sit and watch. Like when we're just chatting, I just notice how you notice. You, I notice that you notice, if that makes yeah, any sense. Yeah, I mean, that's also practice. Mm -hmm. That's also uh, what something that we've done, uh, I've done for so many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing first when you get into the room, there used to be one exercise, theater exercise, when you used to do it in the workshops, that you get into the space, you sit wherever you think you want to sit. And that sounded very childish, okay, earlier. But as, uh, over the years I have realized that we come into a living room or in summer room and we, we suddenly find a space which may not be right for others but you find it right for you. Right. So your body body uh, automatically starts going in that direction, you find that space. But I have done these workshops so many times. Now part of me is so when I get into a room, automatically without making it obvious, I have a look around it and I just follow my body wherever it, it is taking me. So subconsciously, I'm, being, I'm only listening to my, my instinct, where my body, my brain is taking me, in which corner it, uh, it wants to you know, settle itself. It's all about observation. Mm -hmm. It's all about, uh, earlier we used to do, we used to actually sit in the street and look everyone, how he's behaving, how she's behaving, oh, wow. what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. But now it's part of the personality. Even if I'm not looking at anyone, somebody who's here, but I know exactly what that person is doing. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, vigilant. Do you, do you find then that when you're playing a different character, then your body tells you that you want to move in a different way. Yes. There was a time when I was assisting my director, my teacher, Barry John, and he was directing an English play. So while the, the, he was watching the rehearsal and I was making the notes because I was his first AD and suddenly this known actor on this, uh, in the rehearsal, he just stopped and he asked my teacher, he said, Barry, where should I move from here? His simple answer was, where you think you should go. Mm -hmm. No, you tell me, you are the director. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't know. It's your body. <laughs> it's your being. Yeah. Wherever you feel like going, just go. Yeah. I can't tell you. Right. I'm a director. I'm not a dictator sitting here. <laughs> so wherever you feel like, just go. So, so this is, this is something uh, that we should do all the time. So when I'm acting in front of the camera, I don't stop myself if I have to do something in between. I don't hold it. I just do it. It may f fall wrong. We'll do it again. Yeah. But most of the time I have realized that the instinct has never gone wrong. This Manoj Bajpayee who holds it is the character who comes out of it. So Manoj Bajpayee should not interfere into the character's uh, uh, character's instinct. This is what I do. Sometimes I have failed, but we've done it all, all over again. Doesn't matter. I wanted to ask you about Soup. There's a trailer out for Soup, and I saw like nine different versions of you in the trailer. Yeah. That's what I was able to count because it was going quick. Are you playing multiple characters? Are you allowed to tell us anything about Soup? Actually, there is an embargo from Netflix. So we're not allowed to say anything because they have not even come out with the streaming date. But I must tell you that this is the most, most challenging role, I mean roles uh, I have Okay. Played. Okay. 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 <laughs> but uh, it's not about playing uh, th multiple people. It's about playing just one person, one character. But I will not divulge too much about it. But one thing I would say that it's directed by one of the best directors, one of our country, one of my most favorite one. Anurag Kashyap once told me that he's the only director who uses you so well. And I 100% agree with him. Oh. He's done three, three works with me, uh, three projects actually, but I surprised myself in all of those three projects. Wow. It's only because of how he looks at me uh, as a director, uh, how he uh, defines my, my actor. Uh, that, is the, that, that is what something you know, really amazes me about him. I'm very much looking forward to Soup's streaming. This is going to be one of a kind. I mean, definitely for me. The other day, my wife has seen all the episodes of it. Oh, 
She's lucky. And she was completely blown away. She could not come to the terms with the fact that some people and this director and these three writers have written it and these, these, these people have been so lucky to be part of it. So, yeah, this has been... And she's right. I, I really feel that I have been very, very lucky to be part of such a magnificent project. The story, the characters, the, the camera, everything. This is something I've never seen. Um, and I watch a lot of content. A lot of content I watch. I have seen so many films, so many series. But I'm not boasting about my own project. I'm boasting about Abhishek Chauve, who's the director. What a director. I have never seen anything like this, mm. even in world cinema. Okay. Yeah. So you were saying as well that you like you always like to be challenged and and you've also you know completed 30 years in the industry. At this point is there anything left where you're like yeah that's that's the thing that's the character the genre whatever that you'd like to do? It's always about uh, what you're putting out uh there in the universe and I keep putting it out there. When I finished uh, all my commitments uh, six months back and I thought that I'm done, you know, I'm done. I, I'll, I'll, I've done everything here in this industry, all kind of roles, all kind of directors. And then when I watch Soup, I say, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> I was not done. So I keep, I know, I keep send, sending out those uh, messages to all the great directors from here that I'm open to working, working with them. I think that helps. So, so when the directors start uh, uh, thinking that I have to challenge Manoj Bajpayee, I have to take out the aspect that others have never seen. That is when uh, you 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 feel lucky. And so you, when you are working with great directors. They, they, they also feel challenged that I have to take out something from Manoj Bajpi which n nobody has seen in these 30 years. And these directors who I am talking about are the people who love to, t to take those challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I am working with them, they feel responsible that they have to give me something really extraordinary. So that I am challenged. At the end of the day, I have to be challenged. Uh, and some of the best directors that I have worked in do these two years and all the films will be coming out, all the projects will be coming out slowly uh, and gradually. Joram is one, Dispatch by Kanu Bahel, then Ram Reddy has made a film called Pahado Me, it means in the mountain mm -hmm. and uh, Soup is coming, Banda is coming and all of these projects are finished, they are almost ready and some of them will take the festival routes and some of them will will start streaming very soon. Now you uh, did a, sh a movie on Z5 called Silence and is there a follow-up coming to that? Well, yes, you're right. Uh, it was a commitment. I have given it to, the, to Z5 which is our Indian OTT platform. Very popular with Indian diaspora and Pakistani and Bangladeshi people in US and Canada and Europe. They are quite huge, I mean, much more bigger than Netflix and Amazon, all of these people. Wow. Yeah, among the, among the diaspora. Silence, the first one became most watched uh, film on Z5. And that was the time Z wanted a commitment from me for the second part, which I'll be shooting in July. Oh, very soon. Oh, that's exciting for the audience very to find soon. out. Yeah. Uh, does it, is that already public information? Uh, not in a big way. You heard it yeah, here first. Yes, yeah. <laughs> July. I heard it first. <laughs> Take us through the boring stuff. What is your morning routine? What are you what, like? What is the day in the life of when you're not on set and you're not in character? It's always the same. Yeah. Four or five o'clock is something that I, w I have to get up. Four thirty-five. I just love my morning. Wow. Wait. Even if you slept late the night before. No. I mean no. Okay. Then then <laughs> then you know uh, it's very difficult because at least six hours minimum one should okay. sleep just to feel healthy and feel in good mood. And also I'm quite addicted to my morning morning routine like my yoga, my my meditation. Then my physiotherapy exercises, then I go for a brisk walk, 
and then I do some free hand exercises. No weights. I know weights are something that I get bored of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really get bored of. I love to feel and look thin. Thin. Uh, this is something uh, I like. What if you were approached for a role like Dongal? Would you gain the weight? Or would uh, you just wear a, a for, prosthetic? Wear a fat suit, yeah. Wear a fat suit. I don't think I would do it. Oh, really? <laughs> you are looking for a challenge all the time. No, not this. <laughs> all this. <laughs> you know, you can gain weight, but losing it, it's, it's quite a hard thing. Very, very hard thing. And I don't want to depend on anything else, anything chemical. Um, no, so I want to be healthy and working all the time. Is there any part of you that's annoyed that intermittent fasting is not called the Bajpayee method? Because <laughs> you've been doing it before it was even coined. 14 to years I've been doing it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and in, intermittent fasting, uh, those apps started coming now. So I said, okay, I'll correct myself. Uh, I'll call my routine intermittent, you know. <laughs> sure. But yes, I've been doing the thing which has become uh, quite a fad now uh, for 13, 14 years. And uh, I started losing weight uh, quite, well, you know, quite fast when I just thought of doing it. And I, I it took me one week to get used to it because one week is terrible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You really feel difficult to sleep yeah. because oh, you're feeling hungry yeah. and you're feeling hungry so badly that you start feeling that you may develop some kind of acidity. But six week, uh, no, one week, um, it was very difficult. But in one month, I lost, lost so much of weight. I started feeling very light and f- very healthy. And in another six months, I lost around 10 kg. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. And now since so, so many years, uh, I'm, I feel very, uh, uncomfortable when I eat something in the evening. Very, very uncomfortable. Right. I say this in a respectful way. You're old enough that you've watched the world change quite a bit. Right. Do you have any advice to young, the younger generation? Because we have a wide gen- um, range of, of uh, age groups that watch us. Do you have any advice to the younger generation, irrespective of a pursuit of the entertainment industry, just in, in general? Because like, what I loved talking to you about is just everything. Yeah. Like you can talk about anything, right. you know, just life in general. So I just wonder if you have any like little advice for the next generation coming up, irrespective of whatever it is that they want to do. You know, whatever you you love doing, just go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. Life is too short. Yeah. You don't want to regret it, you know, in your in your middle age, in your old age. So just go ahead and do it, whatever you want to do it, what whichever profession you want to choose. Just, only thing is that you have to give to 300%. 100% is never enough. It's 300%. That means you forget everything. And if you put in 300% for initial 10 years, rest of the years, you will be actually making the benefit of those that 10 years, initial 10 years that you've given everything to, yeah. to what you wanted to do. And that also tells you how to lead your life, how to how to be a great professional at the same time. But that initial 10 years is very, very crucial. In my case, I didn't have any other choice because I was rejected by National School of Drama three, four times. And that was uh, a goal that I had pampered since the time I was 10 years old. And it didn't happen. I didn't have plan B. So I had to give 300% while I was doing theater outside, I could not get into one of the best institutes in this world, National School of Drama. But I have done everything fantastic outside, only because I, I, I didn't have any, any, anywhere else to go. Right. So uh, it was, I didn't have any other choice but to really work hard from morning till late, till late night. And again, you know, get up at 4.35 and, and start working on your skill and craft and start doing theater. Second thing I would say that uh, don't take advice. (laughs) So definitely don't take advice from Manoj right now. Just do your own thing, everyone. (laughs) Why do you say don't take advice? Because um, the person who's giving you the advice, Mm -hmm. he himself was surprised by life every day. Everyone's life and situation, life situations are very, very different. And the the life that they are they are leading or they have led, you know, they have uh, the challenges may have been the same, 
but the circumstances must have been very very different that's true that's true so when the challenges are there you know deal with them according to you, the circumstances that you are in at that point of time but try not to get bogged down about two things circumstances and people I, I mean that's, I, that's I, very good advice I, yeah that was about to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was, that was exactly what I was about to say I mean like I, I understand you're saying don't take advice but I think that's actually very sound advice yeah so <laughs> I know what you're gonna say already but would you ever do would you ever consider doing a uh a podcast or a radio show for for because I know you like to mentor people right. and I think for you it's more about one-on-one -on -one mentorship right. but would you ever do a podcast or a radio show if given the opportunity to mentor a lot of people yeah. at the same time I, you know, I want to do it uh, oh. this is because I was when I was doing theater this is what I was trained in by my teacher mm -hmm. where I used to conduct workshops I used to uh, with the with the school children with the street children with the slum children I have been teaching since, and I've taught for so many years. Still, I go and take workshops at National School of Drama or Film Institute here. Any, anybody, any institute who is interested in calling me, if I'm free, then I definitely go to them. And I, that's the time I'm so happy mm. because uh, uh, I love sharing. I love sharing uh, uh, about myself. I love sharing about what, about the uh, acting as a skill mm -hmm. um, and everything else uh, more than anything else is also about the growth that I see in them in those one month time when I'm, I'm doing those exercises with them or mm -hmm. conducting that workshop from A to uh, say D, Z, whatever time mm -hmm. uh, that in between the growth when I look at them from a distance I feel very proud of myself <laughs> when I see them evolving mm -hmm. and learning uh, fast. Yeah. yeah, that gives me a lot of happiness. When you're teaching all these youngsters, do you learn anything from them? Through oh yes, when they are performing, when they are doing those exercises. Uh, just very lately, one girl at National School of Drama and direction was her spe specialization, okay, in the third year. But she came and she became, uh, she wanted to be part of the workshop and she came across as the best actor. And I every exercise, the way she used to interpret or, or, or define that exercise, you know, as an actor in front of us, was so eye-opening for me. And she used to tell me through her, through her uh, performance in the workshop uh, that this, this exercise that you have given can be done, you know, two, three different way. And in my mind, all those ways never occurred. So you are, they are teaching you. They are teaching you through their own work, through their own expressions. Um, so uh, it's, uh, you have to be ready to really learn from people. Anyone can teach you. All the directors that I have worked with lately, all of them are far younger to me. But they were not those people who look at the script of the, of the performance in that particular scene just in the manner you were thinking. So they, they have, they explained themselves they, they, and they have given their interpretation to the performance and the, and the scene, which completely opened my eyes. You're always looking for a challenge. How about the MCU? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just joking. I'm, but seriously, Joker. I, I, I want to see Manoj Bajpayee be the first Indian Joker. Yeah, I would love to do it, definitely. Yeah. I'd love to do it with someone, let's say, Abhishek Chaube. Okay. I, uh, I think he's the one who can m make a very authentic Joker here in India. I just hope that he is watching your show. And even if he's not watching, I'll, I'll show it to him. Just like that. Okay. Now, this is my interview. Please watch it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, that's it for now. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Make sure to check out everything that Manoj Bajpayee has coming out. Lots of exciting stuff. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. You'll see reactions to all that coming up on this channel. Thank you again. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Kirk. And Manoj Bajpayee over there. How crazy, <laughs> How crazy is this? Thanks again. <laughs> applause, applause. Peace out.